Hello, I'm Christopher Apostle, the director of the Old Master Paintings Department here at Sotheby's in New York. My colleague Calvin Harvey and I would like to give you a quick preview of some of the highlights in our upcoming sale of Old Master Paintings taking place on the 26th of January, 2023. First off, I'd like to start with this wonderful picture by Sebastiano del Piombo, an artist that is somewhat rare and perhaps isn't widely known uh, as much as his contemporaries. He was the peer of Giorgione, the peer of Michelangelo, the peer of Raphael, and was working with all of these great Renaissance artists, both in Venice and then most of his career in Rome. This picture is an excellent example of his work. In it, you can see both a combination of a grandeur that we see in his association from Michelangelo, but also a sort of hearkening back to Venetian prototypes of an idealized feminine portrait. In this case, a woman is showing, clutched to her chest, a wreath of laurel, therefore signifying she's either a poet or perhaps she's an allegory of the art of poetry itself. The beautiful, elongated fingers also are very typical of Sebastiano. His works are very rare at auction, and this is an exceptional example of his portraiture. This picture depicts the nativity and is painted by the master of the Spinola Annunciation. We don't know the artist's name, but we do know that he must have been an extremely close associate of Giotto. You see in this picture, in full force, all of Giotto's innovations, particularly in the form of narrative. The story is divided into three parts. The middle register shows the Virgin herself having just given birth to the infant Christ who lays in the manger. He's being adored by the ox and the ass, which the Old Testament tells us will recognize the divinity of the Messiah, of the Christ child. Also beautiful is this adoring angel leaning forward, gazing adoringly at the infant Christ. And up above, more angels, one reaching out to another whose hands are clasped in prayer. It's a spectacularly beautiful picture, intimate, sophisticated, and beautifully preserved. Now let me take you to see another painting which had a very different purpose and has a very different impact than the one we've just seen. This picture is by Anthony Van Dyke, painted when he was a mere 17 or maybe 18 years old. One of the exciting and actually fun things about Old Masters is they pop up in the most unusual places. And in fact, this picture was found by its previous owner in a barn. It really doesn't look like a fully formed picture. There are areas that have been unrestored, but what it is in fact is very typical of Van Dyck's working practice. Both Van Dyck and his master Rubens painted these very free, expressive studies in oil for their final paintings. And this picture seems to be a painting that Van Dyck did in preparation for a St. Jerome in the collection at Rotterdam. This painting, in its immediacy and its frankness, is certainly something that feels very contemporary. And in fact, looking at it, I think you could say it anticipates artists like Lucian Freud. Now let me turn you over to my colleague, Calvin Harvey, who will show you a few more paintings from the sale. I'm standing here with a portrait of Marie Fell by Maurice Cantin de la Tour, perhaps one of the greatest pastelists of the 18th century. The sitter is Marie Fell, his longtime lover and companion. She was a famous opera singer, incredibly well known during her time. And in fact, the piece of music sitting right to her left is a song composed by her brother, Antoine Fell, Les Yeux de l'Amour. Cantin de la Tour has also included a drawing of Cupid in the lower right. Cupid looks directly up at Fell, holding his arrow as if to shoot it at her. She, of course, is looking directly out at the viewer with a sly smile as if she's in on the joke, a little bit more informal than his usual portraiture. Moving now from France to England, we have John Constable's masterful oil sketch of Helmingham Dell. This is a subject and a place that meant a lot to him. Constable was a native of Suffolk, and in fact, he visited Helmingham Dell a famous park with its old oaks as early as 1800. What's incredible about these oil sketches is that you can really see how far ahead of his time John Constable was. Here we are in the 1820s and he's painting on plein air in this wonderfully impressionistic brushy tone, quick, quick brush strokes using the light in an incredible way. 
He loves the landscape of England and is so famous for these wonderful romantic pictures. Moving now to the Netherlands, we have this incredibly impressive, magnificent painting of birds by Melchior de Handekouter, perhaps one of the greatest bird painters in all time. You can see here a myriad of colorful, wonderfully active birds, all set in a pristine landscape setting. Handekouter's paintings were highly sought after. In fact, this painting was owned by the Princess de Vaudemont in Paris in the mid-19th century, and then was in London as part of the Viscount Clifton's collection. From the peacocks to the rooster, the ducks, the cranes in the far background, you can really hear a cacophony of sounds echoing throughout the beautiful landscape. Now, for a slightly quieter moment, we have the beautiful, intimate candlelit scene of a scientist by the artist Anna Dorotea Terbusch. Anna Dorotea Torbush was born in Poland, but also traveled. And what's wonderful about this painting is it is from the moment when she was living in Paris and at her most creative. This painting was groundbreaking for a number of reasons. The subject, the style, and also because it was painted by a woman artist, which was rare at the time. Thank you for joining us. We are thrilled to have these masterpieces and many more on offer at Sotheby's this January. We look forward to seeing you in our galleries in New York and at the auctions.